This is not how an athlete as talented as Russian Yulia Stepanova should be training. Alone, no coach, no team, no flag to compete under, living in hiding under an assumed name, frankly, afraid for her safety and not just hers. Her son and husband are at risk too. They've moved nine times in a year. What about your family? Do they know where you are? Uh, now, no. They don't know about where we, where we. They don't know where you are? They know just we, we safe. Once a rising track star, she's now been branded a traitor by Russia, which wants her silenced. That's because along with her husband, Vitaly, she bravely collected evidence about Russia's systematic doping program and then shared it with the world. Their core conclusion, Russia's track success is all about drugs. There is no anti-doping movement in, in, in athletics. In, <laughs> in Russia, there is a completely opposite thing. It's a doping movement, and uh, everyone around Yulia says that that's the only way to succeed, if you dope and if you lie about it. You should know this is the most unlikely of couples. They met when Vitaly was working earnestly with Rusada, Russia's anti-doping agency. There he is, proudly showing politicians the testing facilities at various events and education programs. He says he believed in what he was doing. And then he met and fell in love with Yulia, and it was all so easy. Until she talked with him about doping, her doping. Something she said was just part of regular training for just about everyone. Was it difficult to, to tell Vitaly that you were an athlete who was using steroids? No, it was easy because I thought uh, he, he knew a bit about athletes, how he used up. <laughs> Did you know, though? I had some suspicion, but not, not to, to the level that she told me. And uh, when she openly said that most of the athletes are doping, uh, that's, I guess that I realized I'm, I'm not changing anything for better here. <laughs> so frustrated with what he was learning from Yulia, Back in 2010, he secretly began sending details to WADA of how Russia's doping system functioned, the way Russia's anti-doping agency was actually working to help athletes get away with doping. Sometimes the agency agreed to test athletes between their courses of drugs so samples would be negative. Sometimes positive samples just disappeared. In Yulia's case, in uh, 2011 and 2012, uh, she was competing dirty in, in national championships and all she had to do after the race, she would do doping controls and just act normal while knowing she was, she was doped. And um, after she's out from the doping control station, just text the sample number to the director of the Moscow anti-doping lab and there were never positive sample. Yulia believed as long as she followed her coach's orders, she'd never test positive. But one day she was curiously suspended, banned. Seems Russia needed a few positives to appear credible, and it chose her. Yulia chose to come clean. She wrote a lengthy letter to Wada outlining everything she ever took and how and under whose direction. She named names. Vitaly was still reaching out to Wada too. They thought action would be swift. But after years, nothing seemed to happen. And of course, both of us, we were frustrated at, at some point because uh, we just didn't know if, if any, anything is happening. Like even at, at WADA, there were uh, people who did not want this story to be out. One, two, three. But he maintains someone at the World Anti-Doping Agency suggested if he really wanted results, he needed to go to the media. He turned to a German journalist who made a devastating documentary. Vitaly and Yulia gathering evidence to be broadcast, showing how easy it is to buy the banned substance EPO in Russia just by ordering some on the phone. You order it like a pizza? Yes, exactly, exactly. 
Yulia secretly recording conversations with officials and trainers. Was ist das? Oxandro Lohn. The documentary laid out every ugly detail. Suddenly, WADA was jolted into action. Less than two weeks after the documentary aired, it announced an independent commission into doping in Russia. Yulia and Vitaly had already started to get weird phone calls and advice to get away, hide, that Russian officials were livid and it was no longer safe to stay in the country. My family told me after this movie, asked me, why, why you do this? Uh, you never change <laughs> this world. Uh, I told him, I, I try. I just try, and we will see. Maybe it's something change. Last November, WADA's independent commission reported back. The words for Russia were harsh. Would you describe it as state-supported doping? In, in, the, in the sense of consenting to it and, and allowing it? Yes. I, I don't think there's any, any other possible conclusion. One of the worst doping scandals in history Russia accused of effectively sabotaging the London Olympics. The International Association of Athletic Federations banned Russia's track team from international competition, including the Rio Olympics, unless it proves it is reformed. The IAAF's officials were in Russia earlier this week assessing if a cleanup is happening. Vitaly is less than optimistic that Russia will genuinely be held accountable. The same people who have been running the doping programs now will say that we changed everything. I don't believe this. You're saying something very important about a huge country in the Olympic movement. How, how did the IOC respond? Uh, it definitely seems that IOC prefers to believe uh, sports officials uh, from Russia and not to us. He doesn't have much faith in the IAAF either. It's recently been accused of knowing all about the Russian doping program since 2009 and hiding the details until whistleblowers exposed it to the world. Life for this couple isn't getting easier. Russia still discredits and defames them. They can't go home. The Russians say that this was a ploy, that you worked with WADA, and that you've applied for asylum in Canada. Yes, yes. Is I, that true or false? It's false. You, you haven't applied to come to Canada? No, no, no. Actually, nobody in Canada was interested in us. They live like nomads now, keeping to themselves, not talking to neighbors, not able to work, barely able to hang on. And hardest for Yulia, she trains, but for what? Oh, so you, you would run if another country said, please compete for us. You would go? Yes. But nobody has asked you? No. Ideally, she'd like to run in Rio under the IOC flag as an independent, but that too seems unlikely. There could be lots to regret, and yet they're still glad they came forward. Our, our lives changed. We, we are free. We don't have to lie. We don't have to. We can be honest about what we do. There's no denying coming clean has a cost. Their limbo doesn't yet have an end. And there's no sign that Russia's addiction to doping and cheating is over either. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News.